Have you ever wondered about the power of spiritual deliverance or the impact of prayer in our lives? Let's delve into the captivating story of Mr. Hakaan Tu, a man who found himself wrestling with the most malevolent of forces. Imagine being ensnared by Satan, Lucifer, ancestral idols, occultic spirits, and even the war-instigating spirits of Gog and Magog. Picture the profound darkness of such spiritual afflictions, the desperation, and the sheer urgency for deliverance. Such was the life of Mr. Hakantu. Each day was a battle, each night a war. He was in a constant struggle against forces unseen, powers beyond comprehension. His spirit was in turmoil, his soul in dire need of liberation. This was the dire situation Mr. Hakantu found himself in on the eve of December 27, 2023. But as we will soon discover, the power of spiritual deliverance was about to manifest in his life in a profoundly transformative way. In the midst of his struggles, Mr. Hakan Tu found hope in an unlikely place. It was in the virtual embrace of the City of Jesus International Ministries Zoom prayer meeting that he found solace. This was no ordinary congregation, but a gathering of souls seeking spiritual liberation, just as he was. Mr. Hakan Tu was not alone in his plight. He was joined by many others, all connected by their shared faith and their collective yearning for spiritual emancipation. The man of God, Christopher Orgy, was their beacon in these troubled waters. His words, steeped in wisdom and understanding, provided much-needed guidance during this crucial time. He was their light, their compass, navigating them through the stormy seas of spiritual adversity. Christopher Orgy's spiritual guidance was not just about prayers, but also about empowering each soul to confront their afflictions. It was through his guidance that Mr. Hakantu was spiritually delivered from the malevolent forces that had bound him. In this pivotal moment, Mr. Hakantu was on the cusp of a spiritual breakthrough. It was in this moment of profound faith that Mr. Hakantu experienced deliverance. As he participated in the Zoom prayer meeting, his heart filled with hope and trust, he found himself not alone in his battle. His spiritual afflictions, those tormenting forces he had contended with for so long, began to lose their grip. The power of the living God Almighty, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit flowed through him, a river of divine light washing away the darkness. The ancestral idols, the occultic spirits, the war-instigating spirits of Gog and Magog, all were swept away in this flood of divine love and power. Through the spiritual guidance of the man of God, Christopher Orgy, Mr. Haka Antu discovered the transformative power of prayer, a door to a new life, a beacon to guide him out of the darkness. And so Mr. Hakantu's spiritual journey led him to a place of deliverance, freed from the chains of his afflictions, and reborn in the light of faith. Let us seek back and watch with a prayerful hut. Shalom. Shalom, men of God. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Thank you so much. My name's uh, Prophet Wycliffe Hakantu. I'm a Zambian living in Botswana. I have a ministry called Exceeding Grace Ministries. I'm also doing the business of uh, beef. I do supply and buy beef. And then I'm also into mining. So this is what I do for a living. And it's an honor for me to be here with you. Glory be to God. Go ahead and let us know what you want God, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit to do for you, your ministry and your family. Thank you, sir. So I want Jesus Christ to first of all forgive me for my personal sins and the sins of my family. You know, uh, I'll start with the family sins which have been uh, there for some time, which I feel are a hindrance to my life. And then as well as the sins that I have personally committed, uh, you know, before knowing the Lord and also before I was strong in the things of God. So my grandfather... On my father's side, you know, was a person who was uh, openly against God. He didn't want God. He didn't love God. He's a person that um, was into so much occult practices. And he had a rule in, in, our, in our family that no one was supposed to go to church. It was forbidden for anyone to go to church. And if anyone did that, they were punished for doing that. So we grew up even going to church secretly because we were not allowed to, to, to serve the Lord. It was very difficult 
even by the time the call of God came upon my life, I had to hide a lot of things. So apart from that, uh, one of the iniquities of the family was severe anger. Uh, there's been so much anger in my family from my father's side, which I've also inherited anger, immorality, you know, uh, bitterness. So these are some of the things that um, I began to also experience after school. Even after my grandfather passed on, I noticed that even though uh, I'm serving the true and living God, the iniquities of my family on my father's side were still showing in my life. And even up to now, um, every time I try to rise in ministry, I'm always being pulled backward. Sometimes I have dreams where I'm being warned to say, we warned you that in this family, no one has to serve the true God. So what are you trying to do? We're going to frustrate you. You know, so this is one of the reasons why I'm here, you know, and I'm, I'm believing God that he will forgive the sins of my forefathers and also my personal sins. All right. You have talked about the sins of your forefathers. What are your personal sins that also affected your relationship and fellowship with God? The first one I have to start with is anger. I noticed that I easily, easily get provoked and get very angry. And it takes a long time for me to, to forgive someone that has wronged me. I've also noticed that uh, that has also come with a lot of bitterness. I think because of the fact that many times I've done things for people, I've grown up in a way whereby there's been a lot of things that I was denied because I wanted certain things done in a certain way. It built a lot of bitterness to a point that even uh, people in my life, when they do something against me, I become bitter towards them. And obviously because of the fact that there was a trace of immorality from the family, I struggled a lot with lust before ministry until the time, by the grace of God, I met Prophet T.B. Joshua who prayed for me. And after that, I was now okay. Then I met my wife and then I was able to marry. Unforgiveness is another thing I forgot, you know, because of, um, you know, having a lot of uh, uh, bitterness and whatnot, I, be I eventually began to have grudges in my heart, especially when, you know, people that I worked with in business, people that I did a lot of things for them, they betrayed me, they hurt me. So because of that, I had a lot of unforgiveness that I've been battling with. Sometimes, even now, I, I check my heart to see whether really I have forgiven, but sometimes I feel I have not yet let go of the pains that were caused in my life. All right, from the teachings you listen to, on how you can easily forgive and forget. What is your decision now? How to cross over with God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit? Now, my decision now, you know, um, looking at the fact that I want to go higher in the work of God and in ministry, I cannot cross over into a new year without me forgiving others. I'll have to let go of every pain, no matter how painful it is, no matter what was done against me, I can only cross over with a forgiving heart. Glory be to God. And right now we are going to pray for you. Nobody will be able, either in the visible or in the invisible world, to stop you from worshiping God in spirit and in truth. No power of darkness will be able to do that. Let us pray. Call the name Jesus Christ and get ready for prayers. Jesus Christ! Jesus Christ! See him coming directly to your life. Call him again. Jesus Christ! Again. Jesus Christ! In the name of Jesus Christ, I send the fire of God's deliverance to your spirit. And I command your spirit to be separated from the powers of darkness that are against your salvation. Holy Ghost, turn the name of Jesus Christ. Turn your heart. Turn. 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 I send fire to the cortic spirits, ancestral spirits, Voices of Satan. Why are you warning him? I send for you to all of you. Holy Ghost. Turn in the name of Jesus Christ. Turn. 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 Turn your kingdoms. Turn your kingdoms. 
Clear your kingdoms. Clear the occult world. Clear your shrines, your incantations. Clear. Clear your evil covenants. Clear the name of Jesus Christ. He belongs to God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. And he has the right to worship God. Clear the name of Jesus Christ. Clear. Speak quickly in the name of Jesus Christ. Who are you that are warning him not to worship the living God? Oh, we are powers of darkness. We are powers of darkness. This man can never serve God. He can never serve God. We don't want him to serve God. How many of you are living in him that do not want him to serve God? We are the ancestral spirit from the Father's side. He cannot serve God. He has tried. He has tried to break free from us. But we keep holding him back. What have you been using to hold him back, torment him, and cause people to hate him and steal from him? The spirit of rising and falling. Every time he rises, he must come down. He helped a lot of people. He has ministered to many people. Even high government officials. He has even tried to reconcile the president of Botswana with the former president. He has tried to reconcile them together. He is that bold. The former president was able to listen to him. But no matter what he does, we disappoint him in the end. He rises and falls. People leave him for no good reason. This is what has been happening in his life. We don't want him to serve the Lord. We don't want him to serve the Lord. We don't want him to serve the Lord. It is a law. It is a law in their bloodline not to serve the true and living God. But he is different. He was called by God to serve the true God. He does not want, he does not want to serve us. He does not want to follow us. Who are you evil spirits? Apart from you ancestral spirits, who else is hiding in this body and stopping him from worshiping the true God? We are the powers of the occult. We are the powers of the occult. We do not want him to prosper. We do not want him to be happy in marriage. We want him to fail. We want him to feel that it is no use serving God because there's nothing working for him. There's nothing working for him. He feels like it's a crime to serve God because nothing is working for him. All that he has labored for has gone under. It could be far by now. It could be all over the Africa. Everyone could have known him. He's got so much influence. He's a great teacher but we are pulling him down. We are the altars of the Father's house. We do not want him to go anywhere. We do not want him to serve your master. How do you operate you evil spirits from the occult world and kingdom? What are your evil works and activities like? Mention them and expose all. Our work is simple is to divert people from serving the true God. We divert people. They have their own ideas. They have their own false religions. They believe in themselves and not in God. That is the work of the occult. So to manipulate people, to manipulate people, to, to make them think they can rely on themselves, to make them feel they are powerful, to make them feel they don't need God, to make them feel they don't need men of God. The occult is all about self-empowerment. It's all about being powerful. That is why. Many people, they join cults when they want to become powerful. It is all about self. It's all about self. How many people all around the world have you initiated, possessed, and prevented from worshipping or serving the true and the living God Almighty in spirit and in truth? There are millions, millions upon millions, uncountable, uncountable, different all over in Asia, in, in Africa, in Europe, in, in the USA. They are all over the world. They are all over the world. They are all over the world. They cannot serve God because it is the biggest sin. The Bible says, thou shalt have no other God besides me. So we make people to serve another God. In the time of Aaron, when Moses went up the mount, we manipulated Aaron to make people to serve wrong God, the God of Baal. That was the beginning of the occult. 
How long have you been existing? You are caught spirits. How many years thousands, together? Thousands and thousands of years, over 10,000 years, we've been existing and manipulating people generation after generation. We're the ones that kept making Israel to sin and follow after false gods. And follow after false gods. That is the power of the occult. It is higher than witchcraft. This one's grandfather saw this guy star. He saw him when he was seven months old in the mother's womb. And he decided to try to manipulate him. But he could not manage. The mother managed to deliver. Her own mother, his mother, struggled to deliver this boy. Even the nurses were saying, why can't you just die or let this boy die? Because it was a difficult pregnancy and delivery. But your master managed to deliver this boy. He's a prophet for nations. He's a great prophet. People respect him. Even in government, when he speaks, when he prophesies, things come to pass. Many times in the spirit, when he met Prophet T.B. Joshua, he used to send him in the spirit to different nations to do certain things because he was grooming him. We stopped him from being trained by Prophet T.B. Joshua like yourself. We stopped him. But God being so kind, last year he met your brother, wise man Daniel. He hosted this guy at his church. And from that time, they became very good friends. He loves the wise man. He respects you so much. And he wants to work with all of them. But we have been stopping him. We block him. Even today, he was struggling to connect with you. Many times he was struggling. This is now the fourth position he had to take. The first position, we blocked him. Second one, we blocked him. Third one, we blocked him. Fourth one, now he is able to connect with you. Who is in Christopher Oji that will get you occultic spirits, ancestral spirits, and other powers of darkness in him completely destroyed, set him free, restore his stolen glory and blessings forever. You have the Holy One of Israel living inside you. The Holy One of Israel lives in you. The son of the great king, that man whose name cannot be mentioned, when he's mentioned, the earth trembles, the earth shakes, every temple of darkness shakes. That great and mighty man who came and died and rose again, he lives right in you, Christopher Oji. You've got the true light. You're one of the end time preachers that are going to serve this world. You're one of the end time preachers that have been sent to correct the mess that has been around the church. The church is messed up and you've been called to clean the church. Your message, though people don't like it now, but eventually they will realize that you are one of the people they should follow in the world. Right now, they may try to ignore you, but the time is coming when all eyes will look to you. You've got a rare grace. You've got a rare grace, and you love people. You love people so much. Too much. You don't want to see anyone in bondage. What is in the message of Christopher O.G. that cleanses the church, the body of Christ? It is the truth. The truth that is preparing the bride. Jesus, your master, is coming for a church that is without spot or wrinkle. A church that is without blemish and you are preparing that bride you are preparing the bride you are preparing the bride you are preparing the bride so your messages are purifying in nature they are cleansing your messages are full of consecration this is what this guy desires also he wants to serve god with consecration he wants to serve god in spirit and truth but the altars of his family they are stopping him they are saying it is illegal for you to worship that God, or else we punish you. That is why he's losing everything. The cars, he's got a gold mine. By now, he's supposed to be a multi-millionaire to sponsor the gospel. But we're delaying things. We're delaying things at that mine. We're delaying things at that mine. That gold mine is millions of dollars. But we're delaying things. He could have met many presidents by now. But we're delaying him. We're delaying him. Because we feel if we put him under pressure, he will bow to our demands. And he will serve us, but he's very stubborn. He's not doing any of that. You listen to the teachings today that God is the one that makes the way of his servants prosperous and gives them a good success. Every child of God has received a spiritual blank check that contains the grace of multiplication, grace of Expansion, grace of dominion, grace of power, grace of strength, spiritual strength. 
listening to me, you cannot boast of any blessings because you are simply a spiritual thief. All of you evil spirits are simply spiritual thieves. They stole things from the children of God and then use them in your evil kingdom. And your end has come. What you are sitting upon and preventing him and other children of God from enjoying will be taken from you and gave him back to them. And you evil spirits will be completely destroyed by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Are you aware? Yes, today was ordained for him. He was always wondering when he sent a message to you people, when are you going to call? When are you going to call? He was wondering, when is wise man Christopher going to call me? I love this wise man. Then this morning, he just saw the message. It was ordained for him today to be set free. What is he going to be set free from? From the ancestral bondage. The bloodline of his father has been holding him back. And the occult powers and the decrees that the grandfather made, he, he made a lot of sacrifices even for his own children. That old man was very wicked. He sacrificed his children. He even sacrificed children yet unborn to Lucifer to gain more power. That man was feared. He didn't just die like that. He died at the time he wanted to die. He was a very uncommon occult man. Don't set him free from those covenants. Those covenants are the ones binding him. If you can cancel them, then we can no longer hold him. Are you aware that the covenant blood of Jesus Christ is the only covenant that will be allowed to exist? Every other covenant will be instantly consumed by the fire of the Holy Spirit. And the people you have held in bondage through these evil covenants will be set free and restored back to God. Are you aware? Yes, we are aware. We are aware. How do you possess nations, cause them to worship other gods, small g-o-d-s, cause them to become occultic and promote occultic activities? How do you do these things? Many nations don't want to follow your God. They don't want to follow your God. They don't want to do things the right way. They want to do things in the dark. They want to do things with a corrupt mind. And that's how we possess them. That's how we introduce all these funny ways to get power, the Illuminati, the, the Freemasons, and all these occults, because they want a shortcut to wealth. Your God builds things slowly, maturely. But many nations, many leaders, they have wanted a shortcut to power. And because of that, they get into the occult and they're given law that they must now introduce the occult to the nation as a sacrifice to the kingdom of darkness. How do they go about that? What kind of laws do they end up creating? Many different types of laws that the enemy may, may demand from them, their master, like laws of abortion, for instance. If you see what is happening around the world, abortion is being allowed. And that is blood sacrifice. That is killing. And God forbids the killing of innocent children. That blood is what makes the occult powerful. Some, they pass laws of homosexuality. They are passing such laws. This is how they are initiating countries. This is how they are causing many nations to fall into sin. The Bible says, your Bible says, sin is a reproach to any nation. But righteousness exalts a nation. How many nations all around the world have you possessed like this and destroyed in this manner? 85% to 95% of the world, the nations, are already in the kingdom of darkness. There are very few people, there are very few nations that are serving God. That is why when godly leaders rise, we fight them until we kill them. They don't last long in power. What have you been using to fight against godly leaders? We raise opposition. They stand against the truth. We raise people that will stand against the truth. And then we put pressure on them. Like what happened recently in Uganda, when the president there stood against homosexuality. 
the whole world stood against him. Even Europe that does not care about Uganda was now in the forefront, trying to seem like they care, to try and fight the president and the laws he was passing. The whole world stood against Uganda for that law that they were standing against. That's how they fight the people that want to pass good things or good laws of the Lord. They fight them. Look at how they fought Magufuli in Tanzania when he said this. They started mocking him and, and fought him. And let's see where he is now. They do not want light. That is why anything or anyone carrying light, they will fight. What weapons have you been using, you evil spirits from the occultic kingdom, to fight against God's chosen leaders and children of God all around the world? What have you been using to fight against humanity? The strength of the occult is manipulation. If you can manipulate anything, you can destroy it. So manipulation is the key. If you manipulate the heart, you destroy the person. If you manipulate the mind, you destroy the person. The key is to be able to manipulate. This is what happened to Judah, Iscariot. He was manipulated. It was easy for him to sell the Lord Jesus. So, so long there's manipulation, this world will continue being destroyed. That is why the truth is what they are standing against. Many preachers, too, are not preaching the truth. They are preaching a manipulated gospel. They are preaching a gospel that is for the itching ear because they're manipulated. What kind of gospel is termed a manipulated gospel only meant for the itching ears? A gospel that tells you that God will bless you even in your sin. A gospel that tells you that blessings can be re released regardless of what you have done. That kind of gospel, a gospel that tells even if you're a sinner, God can give you a house, can give you marriage. That kind of gospel, the gospel that hides sin, does not rebuke sin, a gospel that promotes blessings only, material things, that kind of gospel. That is the gospel I'm talking about. How many people and preachers have you possessed in this manner and caused to preach this kind of adulterated gospel? There are millions of them. Millions of them around the world. Millions of them around the world. And more are coming. And they're very decorated. They've got very good platforms. They've got huge following. They've got influence. Most of them, they started very well. But along the line, they were manipulated. What manipulated them and who manipulated them? Most of them, they received money that came from the occult world. That money, it stains the heart. The person will no longer begin to think right and be righteous. And from there, a door opens and they begin to receive gifts from strange places, which corrupts the heart. And most of the time when these people give them lots of money, they begin to compromise. They begin to preach a gospel that is diluted. In the beginning, they will not see it, but as time goes on, they will realize they have fallen, but it will be too late. So they will have to maintain the status quo. You said that this man was trying to reconcile two people in a certain nation, and he was not able to do that. What stopped him from accomplishing that job, and why? Like we said, this man, any good thing he tries to do, just before it can materialize, we manipulate him. Through the speed of rising and falling, we stop him. At the verge of breakthrough, we disappoint him. He was trying to reconcile the former president and the current president. He sent a message. The video is all over on the internet. You can even watch it yourself. It was a good message from God. And the former president called him and said, listen, I've listened to your message. And I feel I'm convicted. I want to reconcile with the president. What can I do? He told him what to do. And then the president also heard the message. But just before they could reconcile, just a week before they could reconcile, when they were making arrangements, we brought a manipulation and scattered everything 
right now they're back to square one. They're just quiet again. What did you bring that scattered and stopped everything? There was confusion. We brought some rumors that this is a trap. When they were making arrangements for the former president to come to the country to reconcile, something happened that looked like it was a setup for him to be arrested, whereas it was not. So because of that, there was fear among them and they decided not to come to this country and they stayed away. Which country are you talking about now? Botswana. How many people all around the world have you caused to disagree and not come to a place of agreement? Your Bible says your master, when he was on earth, he was asked something by the Pharisees. When he was being accused that he's casting demons by Beelzebub, and then he answered them and said, a house divided against itself cannot stand. If Satan is divided against himself, his kingdom shall not stand. So division is a very powerful tool. Disagreement is a very powerful tool to destroy people, to destroy nations, to destroy families. That is why so many people around the world, billions of people, are in disagreement. Parents against children, children against parents, husband and wife, brother and sister colleagues at work, you know, even brethren are in disagreement. Some are even in disagreement with what God is doing in your life. They are in disagreement. There are lots of tribal sentiments, confusion and rivalries between tribes or among tribes. Political instability everywhere. You see nations attacking another nation or one nation, terrorizing another nation, killing other people in that nation, abducting other people in that nation, kidnapping and hiding them as hostages in their own secret places. And as a result of this, there is no peace. There is no reconciliation. There is disunity, bitter hatred everywhere. What do you know and what do you have to say about things like this? There's a spirit on earth that has been working and causing war. It's the spirit of Gog and Magog. It's there in the book of Revelation. It's there in the book of Ezekiel. It's the spirit of Gog and Magog. The spirit of war and confusion. This is the spirit that is working in Ukraine. This is the spirit that has worked in, in Sudan, where there is war, it is the same spirit waking now against Israel. This is the same spirit that was raised on the 7th of October to attack Israel. But there is no way this spirit is going to prevail. The wrath of God has been kindled already because his chosen nation has been yet once again attacked. So it's the spirit of Gog and Magog. If you want to stop all these wars, prophets like him and yourself and others pray against the spirit of Gog and Magog so that wars won't start. This is not the only war in the world. More are coming. More, more wars are coming. Pray against the spirit of Gog and Magog. It's there in your Bible. How long have you been existing, you evil spirit, that called yourself spirit of Gog and Magog? From ancient times. How old From are you? Wars in the, I'm more than the creation of this world. I'm more than the creation of this world. We are ancient spirits. We are ancient spirits. Older than the creation of the world. Our duty is to cause division and war. We are the ones that entered Cain to kill the brother. We cause war and fighting. Say everything you have done so far. You have time to say all. Don't hide anything. Go ahead. Oh, we just want is for this man not to be free. You know, we stopped this man from having a close relationship with Prophet T.B. Joshua. We gave him a lot of financial challenges. We stopped him. He used to cry, Oh Lord, when will I meet Prophet T.B. Joshua, my father? I want to be one of the wise men. I, I, I want to be close to those people. I want to be close to those people. The day that your master died, he cried the whole day. He could not even preach that day in church. He was just shedding tears. Because the man he loved so much was gone. 
All we want is to stop people that are going to save people from perishing because Jesus is coming soon. He's coming to save people. He's coming for his church. So we want to stop anyone that carries light, anyone that is able to preach the truth and the gospel. We stop them from rising. We have made this man to suffer. He has suffered shame. He's a good man, but we have made people to hate him. And we have made sure that he has no money. He's borrowing. He doesn't have anything yet. We are the ones holding everything. We want to frustrate him. We want to make him quit and feel that there are better things he can do than just preaching the gospel. Since he's very intelligent, we make him feel that he can do other stuff. We are holding everything. We are destroying. We are on the path of destruction. We are on the path of destruction. We want to destroy his life. The ministers and you know, that you preach him. adulterated gospel, do they really know that they are being possessed by your spirit from occult world? Like I told you in the beginning, most people start very well. But along the way, they divert the spirit that was upon Balaam in the Bible. Balaam was hired. They paid wages for him to prophesy against Israel. Most of them start very well. But when the wages of Balaam come, when they begin to see influence, when they begin to have material possession, their hearts get corrupt. And by the time they change, they will not even know. By the time the spirit that came upon the apostle in Acts chapter 2 comes upon, leaves them, when that spirit leaves them, they are forced to look for other means of power. What do you have to say about Christopher O.G. and the ministry, the City of Jesus International Ministry? One thing you should know, this was revealed to this man as well. You are the second generation of Prophet T.B. Joshua. You are one among those five who has been given a torch for the truth. Your ministry is going to grow so big. They're going to grow so big, even at the White House, they'll call you to understand what they need to do. They'll come and consult with presidents who call you to guide the nation. You are a true prophet, a man just like Nathanael in the Bible, an Israelite indeed in whom there is no deceit. Your heart is pure. Your heart is pure. Just like wise man Daniel, just like Harry, just like Racine, just like your other brother there, John Chi. You are unique people. So your ministry is a terror to the kingdom of darkness. They are trying by all means to, to make people not to know you. But it's a little too late. You're going to shake this world. You will shake all the continent. People are going to know the truth because of you. Because they're opening the eyes and the hearts of people. You are a very special child in the eyes of God. God loves you so much. You claimed you have manipulated other people and caused them to preach adulterated gospel. Have you tried to do that to Christopher Oji and to the city of Jesus International Ministry? Your word says, he that is born of God overcomes the world. You are born of God. It is not possible to manipulate you. You are of an incorruptible seed. That is why it is difficult to corrupt you. You have got a very strong discernment because your spirit is founded on the word of God. Anyone born of the word of God is born of an incorruptible seed. They cannot be manipulated. This is the seed that was planted through Prophet T.B. Joshua, the most persecuted man, the most hated man, but yet he was the greatest prophet. What if someone stands somewhere to say Christopher O.G. is not a true minister of God? We don't like him. What do you, in the kingdoms of darkness, say to such person who is now saying that Christopher Oji also belongs to the kingdom of darkness? What will you, evil spirits that are in the kingdom of darkness, say to the person? Remember what I told you. They called Jesus one who is possessed. They said he is casting out demons by Beelzebub to try and confuse the people. Most of the people who are speaking against you their solutions are in your hands. Give them time. They are all going to come and repent. 
and confess of their sins. They are all just blinded to confuse other people. It is all a tactic by the enemy to delay people from coming to you, to delay people from knowing the truth. Satan is just using them to buy time so that people drag their feet to come to you. But yet you're one of the best in the world. As you from occult kingdom, you evil spirits are now exposing your evil tactics to the world. What will happen to everyone in the world, especially people who are watching this live program and listening to this kind of deliverance? What will happen to them if they are held by you? If their hearts are open, they're going to be delivered. If their hearts are open, they are going to be delivered. If their hearts are sincere, they really want to change. If they have a repentant heart, every power of the occult will be seized now. You spirit of Gog and Magog, how else do you operate? What have you not confessed that you need to confess before all of you will be totally destroyed by the fire of the Holy Spirit? Go ahead and confess them quickly. We go from nation to nation, causing division. We go from tribe to tribe, causing division. All these tribal wars that you see, all these Fulani headsmen, you see, it is the spirit of Gog and Magog, all this Boko Haram, all these fighting. Life is spiritual. And once you deal with the spirit, you manage life. So we are the ones operating around the world, in the water, the pirates, people fighting, one tribe after another. In Rwanda, the genocide, we are the ones behind all these atrocities. Our duty is to fight. Everywhere you see war, you see bloodshed, you see one tribe thinking they're better than the other. It is the spirit of Gog and Magog. It sows confusion. Even in the church, we cause people to fight, to divide, so that the church can be divided. How do you call people to divide the church, fight in the church, and cause confusion in the church? What do you use to operate in that way? Most people who go to church, their hearts are far from God. And because they are far from God, they are easily possessed, and anything can be planted in them. They can gossip, they can fabricate stories, they can say things that are not there, and from there confusion starts. Then other demons come in to bring doubt, to bring confusion, to bring division. That's how they scatter things. That's how they scatter things. What are your evil plans that you are making towards the incoming year 2024? Where do you want to attack and cause wars? And how do you want to go about that? Say everything before all of you will be totally destroyed by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Cameroon, Cameroon, Cameroon. Bemenda, Bemenda. We want to cause confusion there. How? Already, there's no stability. But now, in 2024, we're going to steer up trouble. And there'll be serious fighting there. Because all we want is blood. We caused war in Ethiopia, in the Tigray region, in Sudan. So now it's Cameroon. We want to cause problems in Cameroon. We're still going to cause war in the Middle East. It's not over yet. It's not over yet. What kind of war? Of and war. where are you targeting to cause war in the Middle East? What kind of war? This issue of Israel, we want it to escalate. We want Iran to be involved. And it will start through Lebanon. When Israel continues attacking Lebanon, Syria, Iran will begin to attack. And then a war will start there. The war is going to start from there. So we are using the Hamas war to provoke the greater powers so that a greater war can start. What is your mission? What do you want to achieve in doing this kind of terrible thing? Planning this kind of evil and promoting bloodshed. We are here to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Did you not know that the blood is sacred and must not be wasted? We need that blood. It's our energy. If you need the blood, why are you not drinking and feeding on the blood of Jesus Christ, which was shed for redemption? That blood is for his children. That blood is for his children, not us. Who are you that say that the blood of Jesus Christ is not for you? The occult. The occult from the father's side, 
from this boy's father's side. Not Let this man raise his face up while you speak clearly. Say your names again. Who are you? The Oka. What else have you not said? Say everything. How you operate in the visible and also in the invisible world. We have tormented his marriage a lot. You know, he loves the wife. The wife loves him. But we have sent spirits to torment their marriage so they don't enjoy their marriage. We have scattered a lot of things. They love each other, but they always quarrel. They always differ. We have sent a lot of trouble. All we want is this man to be on our side. We do not want him to be on the other side. We want him to join us. That is why we are tormenting him. We are tormenting him. We do not want him to be on the other side. We want him on our side to do our work, to do our mission, and to accomplish what we desire. None from this family. He is the first prophet in this family. This is a taboo. It is unheard of and uncalled for, for him to serve light. He's supposed to be in the dark, doing what we want. We are going to frustrate him. We are going to frustrate him. We are going to cause him problems. We are going to cause people to hate him. We're going to make him run away even from this country. We're going to make sure that he feels that serving God is a waste of time. Because it's one problem after another. We don't make him rest. We don't make him rest. If all of you from the occult world, Magog and Gog, ancestral spirits and other powers of darkness are destroyed, will you continue to cause war, escalate wars in the Middle East, in Cameroon, in Ethiopia, in Sudan, and other countries all around the world? No. Once we are destroyed, we cannot operate. We cannot operate. There will be peace. There will be peace. What else have you not said? We don't want this man to meet president. We don't want him to meet president. He has been given the grace for president. There's a special grace for him to, to speak to them and they listen to him. We don't want him to rise. We don't want him to rise because the president are the key to any nation. If you deliver a president, you have delivered the nation. Presidents are very special and he has been called for that. He has been called for that. We do not want him at all. That's why we stopped this thing of he, which was trying to do. Many presidents are in the Oka. They got their power there to go to, to, to become presidents from the air. So when he meets them, most of them are going to be delivered. And they're going to begin to serve the true God. Most presidents are not serving God. They have made dark, dark, dark covenants with us. They have what, sacrificed many things. What covenants and what do they use to sacrifice in the dark world, the occult world? Some of them have sought the destiny of their nation. Some of them have sought their own destiny, their own souls. Many of them, they have sold their souls just for power, just for them to be in that position as president. They have sold their souls. Some have sold the souls of their children. Some have sacrificed the wombs of their wives. Some the wombs of their daughters so that they can just get to power. And when they get there, some have given the nation, the destiny of the nation, to Lucifer. They have sold the nation. So people like you, people like him, when they meet such presidents, those powers, they begin to get seized. And those who begin to repent, like Nebuchadnezzar repented, and began to realize that it is not by his power, but by the power of God that he became great. So we do not want people like him to rise. We want them in the same place. If you ask him after this, he's got many politicians that he ministers to and prophesies in government in a high profile position. Whatever he tells them comes to pass. But we, the Oka, we are stopping. We want to start passing laws in different nations where the gospel is going to be hindered all around the world. What kind of laws and where? Go ahead and expose everything. Countries like Finland, watch over them. Finland, uh, Switzerland, countries like Sweden, Russia. A lot of laws are going to be passed. China is already happening now. It's either you choose the dragon or you choose your master up there. There's nothing like you have a freedom to worship. We'll begin to take away that freedom. We'll begin to take away that freedom. The occult is all over. People in, in the business world have to be careful. A lot of people are serving Lucifer in the occult. Don't just admire anyone you see out there with money, with fame, with power. 
a lot of them are in the occult. You have to be careful before they can manipulate your destiny. So there are many nations that we are holding. There are many presidents that we are holding because they are the key and we are holding them to. What have you been using to hold them and what is the key you are referring to? You know, when your master was called to ministry after he was fasting 40 days and 40 nights, we offered him the wealth and say, you see all these kingdoms and their glory, we'll give them to you if you worship. All the wealth of this world, the material wealth, it is in our hands. And that is why we say it's the key. Wealth is the key. You mentioned in your prophecy that if people are not strong in the Lord, with the famine that is coming, many of them, many of them, they'll begin to join secret societies and whatnot. The key to joining there, it is the wealth. Instead of thinking about what you can borrow from people, let the Spirit of God drive you to see what you can do to give to people. The reason is because this will not work out in the years to come. Take note of the words in the years to come. If you borrow without adequate provision to pay back what you have will be taken away from you. God has been telling me, pass this message to people on earth. There will be serious famine. F-A-M-I-N-E. Imagine when there is serious famine. You that cannot control yourself now. You don't know how to manage the little you have. How will you be able to face this kind of famine? That will lead you to start living waywardly, borrowing, living in sin, and even joining secret courts. Some of you will even find yourself going into money rituals, scamming people, or even going into deeper pit of corruption. Injustice, misrule, and the like. Because to you, you will see that this is the only way you can survive. Even if it is to turn justice into injustice. Because of money, you will not mind. You go ahead and do that. You are doing that already. Imagine what will happen when this kind of famine will start. If you are lying now, becoming corrupt, turning justice into injustice, no willing to condemn evil. You are the one protesting terrorists. And you are the one protesting. Free this, free that. But when terrorists act, you have never come out to say, please, this is evil. Let the world stand against this evil. You may think it's happening in one place now. This is going viral to places in the world. Your nation might be the next. If you don't stand against evil now, just because it's not happening in your own country, how are you going to stand against it when it will be happening in your own country? Because this is a spiritual way that is moving around like they say, Learn to allow the Spirit of God to lead you to be in a position to save lives, bless lives, help other people, help everyone, not to kill, still destroy, and borrow. That is my message that is coming from God to you. That is what draws the people there. But what they will get is worse than what they think. Now, what do you have to say about the prophetic messages that would guide nations 
leaders, businessmen, people of various tribes on earth. That the minister of God, Christopher O.G., was led by the Holy Spirit to deliver. Let he that has ears listen to what the Spirit was saying. It was not which, talking. Which Spirit was saying those things through Christopher Oji? The Spirit of the one who rose from the dead. The same Spirit that rose from the dead. The man who died and rose on the third day. Your Master, the one who died on the cross. That Spirit the one he left on the day of Pentecost. That is the spirit that is speaking through you. So let he that has ear listen. Will those messages come to pass? Will people listen to the messages and avert the dangers? Which signs? When the issue of famine starts showing places where there will be dryness, there will be inflation, will be high, unemployment. When these things begin to happen, they will say no. But the prophet spoke about these things. And they will go to your prophecy and they will begin to follow what is said. And many are going to repent also. What should everyone in the world do to avert the dangers that are looming? They must follow God. They must follow your God. How? They, must, they must worship him in truth and in spirit. God loves his children, but he hates the, the sin and the abominations that they are doing. So if they can forsake their evil way and follow the Lord, your God, they will begin to see his goodness like never before. God loves all his children, but he hates sin. Sin is an abomination before the Lord. Now you, Spirit of God, and Magog, you ancestral spirits and other powers of darkness, have you ever been exposed? Have you ever manifested yourself like this? Each time this man receives prayers. This is the very first time he has ever manifested, the very first time in his life. And many people won't even believe, they will think he's pretending when they listen. It's his first time to manifest because he was telling God, Father, whatever is hiding in me, whatever is hiding, I don't care my, my, my social status. I don't care who knows me. I don't care who sees me. I don't care what they say. All I want, whatever is hiding in me, let it be exposed. He was fasting and praying for the past two, three days. He was just in fasting and prayer. He didn't care whether it's Christmas or what. He was just praying, Father, whatever is hiding in me, let it go. Let it go. I don't know how you deliver me. And then today, from nowhere, you said your people sent a link for him to be set free. Then he says, "Oh, I'm sure this is what God is going to use. This is going to use this medium to set me free." And he was just praying that Lord, I don't care the embarrassment. I don't care how many people are going to be sharing the video and saying, "Look at him. He was manifesting. He's not going to care. He's not going to care." He decided to open his heart, and all these things. I've been exposed today. He has never manifested in his life. Even the wife won't believe. She would think he was just pretending or something. But today, we have been exposed. We have been hiding all this time. Anytime he goes to see a great prophet, we hide. We hide somewhere far, 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 far. We hide very far away. How do you use to hide and fail to manifest like this? Many times, you know, he has met many great prophets, many great prophets. All the great prophets in the world, most of them he has met them. It's just the grace that he has. He's got that favor to meet great people because he's a great man as well. Anytime he's about to go, we can see in the spirit that a certain light will come to add light to another light. And what we do, we know that if he goes there with us there, we cannot survive. The fire that is in those people. So what we do, we make sure we stay back. We hide anyway. If he's flying out of the country, we make sure we remain in the country. If the great person who is coming to see him is coming into the country, we make sure that we hide in the house or somewhere far. Find the bush, far somewhere. And we can stay there for months. 
so that he does not, he may think that, oh, he's free. You can stay in for seven, eight months, and you think, oh, no, I'm free now, I'm free, I'm not having this problem, you know, life will go on, and then after seven months, we appear again. That's how come you'll be wondering, Lord, why, why? I rise, I fall, I do great things. This man heals all kinds of diseases. He prays for the sick, he prophesies. He will say something now, it will happen tomorrow morning. He's been given that grace from above, but he's always wondering, Lord, why do these things keep coming to me all the time? I'm doing my level best to save you. Why do people betray me? Why do people do bad things to me when I'm just doing good to them? So for the first time, he has manifested in his entire life. Who is in Christopher O.G. that did not allow you, Gog and Magog, you, occultic spirits and powers, you ancestral spirits, you Lucifer and Satan, to hide? You used to hide. Why could you not hide here today? Why? Why could you not hide in the program of the City of Jesus International Ministry? Why? Why could you not hide? You operate with the pure spirit. When a man of God's spirit is pure, there is nothing that can hide before him. It is your purity, your purity of heart, and serving God in your sincerity. That immense light has captured all these spirits, and there was no way you could survive. Are you going to survive, continue to live? Are you going to go back to your evil archives? Continue to reproduce? Come back and attack? Or all of you, your archives inclusive, will be totally destroyed by the fire of the Holy Spirit? The fact that, that we have been exposed, it means this is our end. Because we have never been exposed. We have never been exposed. What have you not said? How do you operate in dreams and revelations of people, especially in the spiritual world? How do you operate? Like I told you, the strength of the occult is manipulation. So when they feed people in the dream, when people are being fed in the dream, when people are dreaming of where they grew up from when they were young, they are villages, all those things are manipulation. At the verge of breakthrough, they'll eat in the dream. They'll be having sex in the dream. They'll be, they'll be having all kinds of attacks. Why? Those are manipulations. We manipulate people so they don't get to their destiny. Manipulation is like you are going to Inugu state and then someone tells you, no, go to Anambra state. You know, you go to the wrong destination. That is what manipulation does. That is what we do. Many people's destiny are supposed to go that way, but we make them go that way. If someone who you have initiated and given your demonic power or powers happens to invite someone for crusade or invite someone to minister under his ministry, without the person coming knowing, what will be the impact? So who invites who? The one with the light or the one with the darkness? The one with the darkness. He invites the person with light. Yes. What will be happening to the one with the darkness and also to the one with the light? It depends on the measure of light. If the person with light is increased, has got great strength, he will overcome, like a scripture says, when a strong man armed keepeth at his palace, his goods are safe. So when the one with light, if he's stronger, he will overpower the one who is weak. But the one who is in the darkness, if he is stronger than the one in the light, he will swallow that little light, and that person will be automatically initiated without him knowing. And if it's a crusade, everyone there will be manipulated. How do you manipulate people in crusade ground? Remember, remember, every person is a portal, is a point of entry. Just like you are now, you are being used by the Lord. It's not you working there, it is God himself. He is using you to touch millions of people. Right now, as we are speaking, other people even in their dreams, you are delivering them now. They are not watching, they are not part of this meeting. They'll be delivered. Others are going to be delivered 
eight months from now when they watch this video, they'll be wondering, ah, so such a thing happened. Because the spirit world is not time bound. So when people come to a crusade where there's an evil person, the evil person there becomes an agent to spread demons. Anytime they speak, they lay hands, it becomes a medium. So if they make a declaration on people, that declaration is powered by evil spirits. Just like you, when you make a declaration, that declaration is powered by the Holy Spirit. So it's the same way. It's not the same way because the way of the Lord is not the way of evil spirits. Well, we copy. We copy the ways of the Lord. Let me put it that way. What do you have for your evil agents, those who are possessed, to introduce various laws that are causing people to live a life of sin and sinful desires? There is what is known as the sin agenda. Right now, the kingdom of darkness is focusing on one thing. It is called the sin agenda. This was even shown to this boy here, the one you are praying for. It was shown by the Lord that concentrate and pray because the enemy is introducing what is known as the sin agenda. Many nations are compromising. They are allowing strange laws, homosexuality, and they are told if they don't accept those laws, they are not going to fund them. They are going to make sure they, they blacklist them. So most leaders, because they don't rely on God, they don't have the fear of God, they are playing along. They are playing along. That is why sin is abounding everywhere. Anything you watch on the internet, it has a content of sin. The movies you watch on the internet, there's a content of sin. They are making sure that everything you watch and see, there must be an element of sin. You see an advert about a car, just a normal car, they'll put a naked woman. What has got a naked woman got to do with a new car? It is the sin agenda. Say more and expose more of the sin agenda. Go ahead. It's in everything. It's in the music, the way people dance. Every dance nowadays is, is provocative. Most dances are very immoral. They are seductive dances. The dressing, the chatting, everything you see around the world, people want to, to post pictures naked. They'll be showing their nakedness. Everything provokes people to sing. Everything programs the mind to sing. People are prepared to do all kinds of things, all the kind of movies you see. Everything around the world, it is more of sin than righteousness. Every movie, even comedies nowadays, people are just supposed to be laughing at normal jokes. But the jokes you see today, there's a lot of profanity, a lot of insult, a lot of cursing. It is the sin agenda. Because when your master comes at the rapture, many have to be caught in the web of sin. And they'll go to the lake of fire with Lucifer. That is the agenda. To bring as many people into the sin agenda. Seeing that... You are being exposed now, and your evil agendas are also being exposed. What do you think will happen to the souls of people you have targeted to capture and caused not to be raptured when Jesus Christ comes back to take true believers to the kingdom of God? Your master said, repent or perish. If they can repent, then they shall be free. But so long their hearts are in the world, so long they are friends with the world, they are going to the lake of fire. Nothing will change that. There are many things going on, prostitution, scamming activities, kidnapping activities, robbery, and the like. What do you know? And what do you have to say about these kind of things? All these robberies you see, they are caused by Lucific angels. They are caused by Lucific angels, fallen angels. All these 419, that's the spirit of the con artist. It's the spirit of the con artist. That is what is used. It's a, it's a master deceiver, master deception. The spirit of the con artist is to deceive. And the spirit of prostitution has always been there. It's the spirit of Jezebel it is the oldest demon on earth. It is the oldest demon on earth. And every day, they are destroying the world. If people must cross over in life, seeing that you all are about to be completely destroyed, you evil spirits, what are you going to say to them that will enable them to cross over with God 
Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit and to cross over with all the blessings of heaven. When Moses was taught to make the children of Israel cross over, he was taught tell the people to sanctify themselves. Let them remain pure. Let them remain clean. Let them wash their clothes. Do you know the meaning of that? For, the, for you people in this world today. He says, let them wash their clothes. The clothes represent garments. Before you cross over, you need to make sure that your garments are clean. The children of Israel had to wash their garments at that time. So, you people in this age, in this era, you're supposed to wash your garments. Your garments must be clean. And then you have to purify yourself. Moses says, sanctify yourself. For in three days' time, you will cross over. The same thing happened in the time of Joshua, in the book of Joshua. He also told the people of Israel, in three days' time, you will cross the Jordan. Sanctify yourself. Don't corrupt yourself. Don't come near women. So the same thing works even for this generation. Before you cross into anything, new year, new month, whatever it is, a new dimension in life. You need to sanctify yourself. Your garments must be changed. Your garments must be clean. And you must sanctify yourself. Purify yourself of all filth. And then you will cross over into the promises of your mother. Christopher O.G. has been inspired by the Spirit of God during his message to let people know that they should take off fasting exercise from the 30th of December 2023. He encouraged people to start from 29 because we are going to have four year anniversary of the City of Jesus International Ministry and stretch it down to the 1st of January. What do you have to say about that prophetic steps that would enable people to cross over with God, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit? Don't forget that we are expecting everyone to join us to fast from the 30th of December, 2023 to 1st of January, 2024. Let us learn to dwell in the word of God. Meditate in the word. Meaning we must keep the word of God in our mouth. Meditate in it day and night and do what the word says. That will enable us to cross over with God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. It's the same instruction that was given to Moses, to Joshua. It was given to you also. That is why there's the three days, 30, 31, and the first. Those are three days. The same thing will happen. Those that are going to fast with you, those that are going to follow what you're saying, they are hard to be purified. Because fasting sanctifies the body, the spirit, and the soul. So those who are going to do that instruction in righteousness, they are going to genuinely cross over. But those that will take it lightly, they will remain in 2023. Though physically, they will be in 2024. There are many people who are trapped behind as far back as 2001, 2002, 2001. Because they are... In another year physically, but in the spirit, they are behind. I command you, Lucifer, to speak. Gog and Magog have spoken. Speak quickly. You claim that they sacrifice blood and they sell their souls to you, Lucifer. Go ahead and speak. How do you operate? The whole world is under me. How? All these spirits, I send them to work for me. Whatever it is that confess, I'm the one that sends them. Because I demand worship. All I want is to be worshipped. That is why I punish people. I manipulate, I kill, I destroy. My aim is to be worshipped. Like that man upstairs is worshipped. Who are you that claims that your aim is to be worshipped? You just mentioned my name. Say your name Remember by yourself. Name. Say your name by yourself quickly. Speak quickly. Lucifer. What about you, Snake? What is your own specific role? How do you operate? I'm a generational spirit. Most families are trapped through the snake spirit. This man's family, the grandfather, 
used to have one spiritually that used to communicate with him. That is the spirit that monitors. It swallows everything he does. So his church will grow big, 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 big. Then it will swallow it again. He will try to make money. It will swallow it again. That is what serpents do. They swallow things. And they do it silently. You know this man has got a gold mine in Zimbabwe. It was given to him by grace. But we are delaying everything. We are delaying everything. There was a time he was even planning to come and see you. Because he just loves you and he honors you. He wanted to come there and see you and wise man Daniel because the two of you, he loves you so much. But the serpent was swallowing his finance. So we're using the serpent to swallow every single thing he tries to achieve. And it looks like he's, he's a nobody. He's having nothing. He's a beggar. But yet he is a billionaire. He is a billionaire. He's a billionaire. If you are totally destroyed, you serpent, what will happen to people's blessings and destinies, their riches, their good health, and their glory you have swallowed. What will happen to them? They shall be restored a sevenfold. They shall be restored in a sevenfold dimension. Now you sit and speak. Snake spoke. Lucifer spoke. Speak you, Satan. I want to destroy the world. I want to destroy the world. I want to destroy every great prophet, every great prophet and prophetess, those yet unborn. I want to destroy them. I want to destroy them through abortion. I want to destroy them through premature death, sicknesses. I want to destroy them. I'm the spirit of destruction. I want to temper with what God wants to do, with the plan of God on earth. I'll fight with everything. Nobody can fight with God and with his superior plans and succeed. Who are you that claim that you will fight with God and destroy everything? Your name? Satan means God's enemy, God's rival, one that fights God. So I fight everything, even children, I fight them. Old people, I fight them. The youth, I fight them. Anyone and anything that is close to God, I fight. What is the true meaning of Lucifer? You, Lucifer? Lucifer was a good name before. It was a good name. It meant the light bearer. When he was serving up there in the heaven before he fell. What about you, snake? What is the true meaning of your name, serpent? The serpent is a crooked being. The meaning of the serpent is deception. To deceive. That is why... I was used to deceive Eve in the garden. The serpent only deceived the spirit of great deception. That is why you see in many communities, in many communities around the world, they worship the serpent. Go to Brazil, go to West Africa, go to any place. Most witch doctors, they use snakes everywhere. They appear in dreams. It is the most used spirit to cause deception and destruction because it operates silently without anyone knowing or noticing. You say that the snake appear in green. How do you mean? It depends. It depends on the area, on the place, on the mission. But it can appear in different forms and different colors and different... Uh, op it depends on the operation. It depends on the operation. It depends on the operation and the area because this whole world the operation of evil is different from one to the other. Is there anything you have not said now? Say them quickly because all of you will be totally destroyed now. Say them quickly. Pray for the Middle East. Pray for the Middle East. Human trafficking. Human trafficking. A lot of Africans are being sold and being destroyed there. There are a lot of blood-sucking demons there because that place is a dry place. It's an arid land. It's a dry place. There are a lot of blood-sucking spirits. Most people are going to Dubai, to Saudi Arabia, to Qatar. They are going there for breakthrough, but most of them is a trap. They are going to be destroyed there. There are so many blood-sucking spirits. They will, they will not come back alive. They are going to be used for ritual. They are going to be used for destruction. They are going to be there. A lot of dark spirits there. 
vampires. There are a lot of vampires there operating in the Middle East. Physical vampire or spiritual vampire? Vampires are spirits, but they work through people. How do they work? There are people on the right day who drink blood, human blood, and they eat human flesh. They are there. Physically or spiritually? They, they drink it both physically and spiritually. There are those who drink it physically and there are those who drink it spiritually. How do they get such blood physically and spiritually? When people go missing, they take them, they kill them for rituals. And those rituals demand that those body parts and the blood be drunk physically. Some, they take it and take it to the ocean. These big, big oceans, they, the Persian Gulf and other oceans and seas. They take those parts, they take that blood and pour it there for spirits to appease those demons so that they can give them wealth. That's how these people operate. A lot of seas around this world are possessed. The Black Sea, the Caspian Sea, Mediterranean, all these places. That is why you see many times the boats will be capsizing. When people are trying to cross, going to Europe, going to the Middle East, the boats will capsize from Norway. A very small accident. 2,000 people are gone, just like that. It's a sacrifice. Those things are done in the spirit way before they happen physically. What sacrifice? You said it is a sacrifice. What sacrifice? I told you the people in the Oka, their strength is sacrificed. So the more they sacrifice, the stronger they become. So they use any, they can use an accident in a plane, they can use an accident using a boat, they can use an accident on the road. So they, they project spells on those boats. And most people, when they are coming on those boats, they are unrepentant. They don't pray, they don't fast, they don't seek God. So already they are weak and they become an easy target and they are destroyed. But pray for your sisters who are traveling a lot to, to the Middle East. A lot of them now, they're in prison. They're in bondage. They are living like, like tigers in cages. They are being used that far. And they can't cry to anyone. You said that they cannot cry to anyone. How do you mean? because they are being kept and they are being used by high-profile people. And there's no one they can cry to. There's no one who can hear them. There's no one they can speak to. That is why many of them have gone, they have left Africa, and no one has heard from them in many years. What message do you have for people who are always longing to travel abroad, even illegally? Christopher Oji was led by the Holy Spirit to give prophetic message that people should not dare to travel illegally because they might go and not come back. Those of you that always want to travel, learn to travel legally. Did you hear what I said? Learn to travel legally. Don't take short court because of the coming events. You that want to pass through this desert or through that desert, go by road. You that are always being deceived by people, especially during festive periods like this, not to follow the right procedure. Listen. Don't travel illegally. Follow the right process. The reason is because a lot of people will be trapped while they are on their way. A lot of people will be what? Trapped. And they will not be able to come back. Do not say that you did not hear this. And Kidnappers are already on the highway where you are trying to go through and once you have become the victim, they will not only get you executed, but also they will make sure that they drain the finances of members of your family. Give us five million. We will release your son. After that, they will collect another 20 million. At the end of the day, 
you may not survive it. The message says, don't travel illegally. God is not against people looking for a greener pasture. Make sure that you are led by the Holy Spirit to travel. The Holy Spirit would want you to do proper things. Follow the right procedures. Have the right documents. Be patient. You were right. You were right. 100% right. People do not know something. Many people are not content and they don't believe that God can provide for them anywhere in the world. God can make you anything, anywhere. He is not limited by space or time. But the pressures of this world, the challenges of this world, they make people not to be patient. And they will do anything just to come out of poverty. But most of them don't even get to have of the things they desire to have. They die before their time. So anything done illegally is a gateway for destruction. Destruction by? It can be anything. It can be disease. It can be death. It can be any, any method. You see most of them, they go there, they get stabbed, they get shot by the police. Anything can happen to them. Anything can happen to them. Many people try to cross from Africa through Libya. They get shot in the desert and they're buried there. So anything can happen. Finally, is there any other thing you have not said? You need to expose all and get yourself destroyed forever. Say that quickly. There's nothing else I have to say. All I just want to say is don't free this man. Don't set him free. Don't set him free. He's a star. You know even the meaning of his name. The meaning of his name, Wycliffe, means the rising star. That is the meaning of his name. Call his full names and say the meaning. His, his first name is Wycliffe. He is the name of victory. The day he was born, the father was a campaign manager for a politician. And that particular morning of his birth, he won the election. And he was named Wycliffe, meaning a rising star. He was also born on Zambia's Independence Day. You know independence means a lot in the spirit for any country. It means freedom. He was born to set people free. He was born to save people from bondage. So his name means freedom. It means a rising star. We do not want you to help him. Many men of God feel jealous when they see him. Many of them decide not to help him. They, 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 they ignore him because they're intimidated by what they see in him. His last name means a man of the people. So it means a rising star full of freedom and also a man of the people. We do not like him at all. He is not only going to be set free, but everyone in the world, everyone right from the creation of the world that you have possessed, initiated, and kept in your evil kingdoms will all be taken out of your kingdom and placed into the kingdom of God forever. That is the spiritual revolution that is going on now, and that is the war. Are you seeing that happening already? Yes, but please don't remove the curses that were put on his life. Don't remove that curse that were put on his life. Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 15, verse 13, stated, I tell you, anything my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted, gathered together, and destroyed by fire. He is created to be blessed and not to be cursed. So your curses are part of the things that will be assembled together, uprooted, and destroyed. Meaning your curses will be taken out of his life and family forever. What do you have to say? Don't set him free. Don't set him free. His freedom was given since 2,000 years ago when Jesus Christ came for the freedom of mankind. It's not something that is happening now. It had already happened. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Son of the Most High God, the resurrected Jesus Christ, 
I send fire from God, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, and I command the Spirit of God, Amagog, I command all occultic spirits, grand masters of the occult world, all ancestral spirits, all kinds of idols, the queen of the coast, wicked Jezebel, the spirit of seduction, prostitution, you witches and wizards, you serpent, the great spirit of deception, you Lucifer, you Satan, the one who stands against God, his plans and children. I command you and your evil kingdoms and agents to be totally consumed by the fire of the Holy Spirit. I can see that happening. Holy Ghost, turn the name of Jesus Christ. Turn. I send fire to all seas, the Black Sea, Mediterranean Sea, Indian Ocean, Red Sea, Atlantic Ocean, Bermuda Triangle, Caribbean Oceans and Seas, rivers of all kinds, deep waters, shallow waters, deserts, oases of all kinds, islands of all kinds, I send the fire of the Holy Spirit to the sun and to the wicked spirit of Panther, to the moon and to all the powers of darkness there, to the blue sea in the moon. And I send the fire of the Holy Spirit to all planets, the ones that are discovered and the ones that are yet to be discovered. And I command all occultic activities, principalities and powers of darkness, blood-sucking demons in high places, not only to be captured, but to be completely destroyed by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Holy Ghost, turn the name of Jesus Christ. I send the fire of God's deliverance to all families. Families from generations to generations. All tribes, all religions. System of governance of all nations on earth. Politics of nations, economy of nations. Everything that happens in the visible and also in the invisible world, and I command deliverance to take place. Holy Ghost, find the name of Jesus Christ. You cannot hide in the air. You cannot hide on earth. You cannot hide in the underworld. You cannot even hide in water. You can't hide in the north, south, east, and west. You cannot hide in any minister or in any ministry. I send fire to the body of Christ and I command all Antichrist spirit to be completely destroyed by the fire of the Holy Spirit forever. Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus Christ, leave ministers of God alone. Leave their ministries, their finances, their callings, their gifts. Leave their gifts alone. Turn the name of Jesus Christ. I command all your possessed to receive deliverance and to be returned back to God. I command all of them to be moved out of the kingdoms of darkness and to be placed into the kingdom of God forever, the kingdom of light. Holy Ghost, turn the name of Jesus Christ. Let there be spiritual revolution. Let there be revival, complete healing and deliverance. Let there be love, understanding, 
Let there be joy of the Holy Spirit and peace, not only in Jerusalem, in Israel, but also in all nations in the world. Let your planned wars that you have decided to cause in various nations be for it and completely destroyed by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus Christ, I send fire to all occultic covenants, evil sacrifices and initiations, and I command all of them to be completely destroyed by the covenant blood of Jesus Christ. Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus Christ, tear! I send fire to his ministry, his marriage, his businesses, his mining company, and I command all evil spirits that are hindering his growth, blessings, breakthroughs, and salvation to be completely destroyed by the fire of the Holy Spirit forever. Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus Christ. What is happening to all of you? Will you continue to exist and operate? No. No. I no. send fire to your evil archives. Archives of the kingdoms of darkness. Archives of poverty. Archives of war. Archives of killing, stealing, and destruction. Archives of barrenness. Infirmities. Shame. Disgrace. Confusion, deception, nightmares, evil attacks, archives of sins and sinful desires. And I command all these archives of Satan and his evil agents to be destroyed by the fire of the Holy Spirit now and forevermore. Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus Christ, let there be spiritual sanctification, spiritual cleansing, in the world. Let the body of Christ be sanctified forever, justified forever, and let the kingdom of God be established upon it forever. Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command the spirit of anger, idolatry, sorcery, divination, witchcraft, witch hunt, evil spirits in charge of scamming activities, kidnapping activities, terrorism, corruption, injustice, misrule, racism, immorality, adultery and lives of sin be destroyed. Let all satanic laws that are designed to promote sins and sinful desires in the world be consumed finally by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus Christ, tear let all leaders all around the world, all nations all around the world, everyone all around the world receive complete deliverance that is given by God, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, both now and forevermore. Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus Christ, tear, 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 tear. Be free in the name of Jesus Christ. The evil spirits are totally destroyed and he's free now. He's receiving a new heart.
Men of God. Shalom. What happened? Tell us your names, where you are speaking from, and whom you are. Uh, my name is uh, Prophet Wifeless Akantu. I'm a Zambian living in Botswana. I have a ministry here. What is the name of your ministry in Botswana? Exceeding Grace Ministries. What happened to you during the prayers? I remember the time I was explaining to you about what I'm going through. The moment you told me to, to shout the name Jesus Christ, I called the name Jesus Christ the first time, the second time, then the third time, I saw myself, you know, like as if I'm coming out of my body. I don't know how I can explain it. You know, it, it, it's like I was taken to another world. And then I was watching what was happening to me in the spirit, you know, and I could see, you know, the, the things I was thinking were troubling my life. The spirit which I thought were troubling my life, I could see them inside me. You know, I could see the, the, the serpent, I could see the, the occult powers of my grandfather, you know, how they were tormenting my life. But you were, it's like they were confronting you, but I couldn't do anything. And I could hear my voice speaking, but I couldn't control it. You know, I couldn't control it, sir. Did you ever know that you were possessed by Satan, Lucifer, snake, the evil spirits from the occult world? ancestral spirits and other powers of darkness uh, many times i would think i'm totally delivered you know but i would realize after some time that these things are still there because from the time i began to know the lord you know and then i i knew looking at the background of my grandfather and what was happening in the family that i needed deliverance you know but each time i went for deliverance I, I would always think I'm totally free, you know, but two days ago when I was fasting and praying, I told myself, Lord, I don't care who knows me. I don't care um, what people may say or think my salvation, my freedom comes first. I said, Lord, I know I've never manifested, but this time around, anything that is hiding in me, take it out. I don't know who you're going to use or what, but I just want to be free. I want to be sure that I'm free because my salvation comes first before reputation before any reputation, before who's going to mock me. And I remember when I prayed like that, I had a dream where uh, an, an evil being, I think that was Satan, he says, you, you know, if you're going to manifest, everyone is going to laugh at you. They'll be sharing your video and they're going to be mocking you. So don't go for deliverance. Then I said, it doesn't matter whether people will laugh at me, I'll go for deliverance. Then I just let, let it like that. And in the morning uh, yesterday, that's when I got a message from your team that I should get ready for a Zoom meeting, then I knew that the Lord is onto something. The unclean spirits claimed that um, while you were busy about reconciling two presidents, the ex and the current of a certain nation, they tried to set up evil plan that made the ex believe that he was being set up it was just a kind of setup that if he comes back to reconcile with the current one he might be arrested what do you have to say about that incident yes the beginning of this year i did a video that went viral god spoke to me about the reconciliation of the two heads of state you know and uh, there was a very good response from both of them concerning the matter so when the reconciliation process was at an advanced stage where one of the representatives of the former president was coming to the country then there was confusion you know to a point they felt they were according to them they were not safe you know they felt maybe it was a a trap of some sort and then everything was put on hold and then they couldn't come so i was a bit disappointed because it i kept seeing that trend where when something great is about to happen at the verge of it happening then there'll be a lot of disappointment. Did you know that evil spirits were the one that uh, did that job and stopped that from happening? Yes, it was my suspicion, you know, but uh, spiritually, you know, there, there are levels. So I thought now, this one now is beyond my level. It will need someone of a higher grace and authority than myself. So 
what life do you want to start living now so you can maintain your relationship and fellowship with God and the grace of God you have just received now? Amen. Uh, like I said when I began before the prayer, I said my desire is to live a consecrated life, you know, a life that is sanctified for the Lord because this is what the Lord requires from especially as the servants of God. So I want to live a life that is free from sin, you know, anger, lust, anything that is sin. I want to live free from that. I want to live a life that is consecrated, that is built uh, and nurtured by the word of God. That is the kind of life I want to live from this very second. What message do you have for ministers of God, especially those who are like only running after their names? and what other people would say. They themselves know that they need deliverance. You see them hiding. Some will be saying, I started this ministry before this man. How can I go to him for prayers? Or I started a ministry before this lady. How can I go to her for prayers? There is this kind of division, confusion, even in the body of Christ. What message do you have for people? All right, I think I'll, I'll start with the, the message about ministers who feel, you know, they cannot be delivered openly. Because one thing I've noticed is that most ministers, they would want to go for deliverance if it is done in secret, you know, because of what members will see, you know, what people who follow them will see, because uh, they feel they're going to be judged. You know, there's a lot of a stigma that comes by, you know, manifesting, as people call it, but... You know, freedom is freedom. You know, if you are, you are taken out of bondage, you should rejoice. So I want to advise fellow ministers out there that, you know, when there's something wrong about your life, go for your freedom. I think it's a greater bondage to refuse to go for deliverance, you know, than to stay with whatever is tormenting you, you know. So for me, I took the step. I told myself, you know what, uh, come what may, whether it will rain or not, I must get my freedom. You know, it is more important than anything, than reputation, you know. And then um, people also who look at things like, no, this minister started recently and whatnot. You know, uh, spiritual protocols are different. You know, hierarchies are hierarchies. You know, somebody may have started two, three, four years ago, but their authority in the spirit is way beyond two, three, four years ago. You know, so I want our fellow ministers to have discernment. You know, and know that authority is authority, you know. So once you recognize authority, go and get your help and you feel better. Like right now, I feel very light, you know, I feel so free and, you know, I can even hear God's voice that just this short time that you have, you have prayed for me. Who has actually set you free in Christopher Oji and also in the City of Jesus International Ministry? Well, the Lord Jesus Christ has set me free through the faculty of Prophet Christopher Oji through the ministry called him. The Lord has used your faculties to deliver me today, and I'm grateful to him forever. What prompted you and your conscience to humble yourself and even seek for prayers here at the City of Jesus International? Ministries Online Prayers. Okay, personally, just a short background about myself. You know, I've always loved, um, you know, Prophet T.B. Joshua and the wise men. You know, I've, I think there's no sermon or message that I've not watched of either of you people. You know, I've always been inspired by your way of life. You know, and by the time God called you to start coding, I was, you know, following your teachings, you know, following everything. And I even told God, Lord, I want to host wise man Christopher at one time. So what prompted me to come to you is I know what you carry. You carry so much truth. You carry so much fire. You walk with God, basically. Let me just put it that way. God, God walks with you, you know. And, you know, I want to recommend as many of my brothers and sisters out there in the Lord, those that can manage via Zoom to do that, and those that can visit within Nigeria, let them pay a visit and come to uh, Kojim, the City of Jesus International Ministry. Glory be to God, I tell you. No power of darkness, no demon, no spirit, no force of darkness can ever exist to tell you not to serve, no, not to worship the living God Almighty. 
Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. You are permanently set free now. And the grace of God that will enable you to worship God in spirit and in truth have been given to you. Make sure you continue to make God's word the foundation of your life, the foundation of your ministry, and the foundation of your businesses. And I'm seeing you coming back Amen. to share multiple testimonies to the glory of God in Jesus Christ's Amen. name. Amen. I'm looking for Amen. Shalom. Thank you. Thank you.